So testimony time. So as you know, we have a Tuesday prayer meetings, and it's like a revival. And I would, I, I, I'll tell you some amazing stories right now because I'll also tell you how God answered my prayer. Right? Right. Remember how I have a mes- message about praying according to the will of God, and I just started taking those things in. And I pray specifically that God would bring new people to our Tuesday meetings, and every week He has brought new people. And I also pray that God would bring Muslims, Muslims to our prayer meeting, and it happened. Two Muslim men came to our prayer meeting on this Tuesday. Crazy. And I got to lay hands on them and pray for them. And so did my father-in-law. It's, it's kind of funny because the, the women in the back were looking at them kind of funny because they thought that they were going to bomb the church. So they're feeling un, uneasy about them being there. But God answered my prayer. It was from the Holy Spirit. And two Muslim men came to our church. And second thing is, apparently, that this prayer meeting is not just touching people in these four walls it's touching people down the street and one lady said that we started to worship and praise God and the Holy Spirit came upon her and she said uh, I turned off my TV and I started to pray and I started to weep and she she told this uh, to uh, my father-in-law He's, and she said I really wanted to go to their prayer meeting and something kept holding me back from going he says no next time come to the Tuesday meeting come no problem. And so God is grabbing people down the street. He's, he's bringing Muslims to our prayer meeting. Even my father-in-law two weeks ago said a Muslim police officer came to the church. And he says, great message, message pastor. I really liked your message a lot. A Muslim guy, right? So God's answering all my prayers like in a tremendous fashion, I have to say. Amazing. I prayed for a guy over the phone, uh, for his back, and he got, he got a lot better after that prayer, he said, and he said he would want to come to the prayer meeting. They live like two hours away in a different city, and they wanted to come for the prayer meeting. I don't know if they, I don't know if they came, but maybe they'll come, I don't know if they came, I don't think they came this uh, Tuesday. Maybe they did, I'm not sure, I don't, know, I don't know everyone. Some people, sometimes my father-in-law would just hand me the phone and pray for this person. Uh, but I believe that more people are going to come from different parts of Lahore for this prayer meeting. It's spreading, and people are getting touched down the street, and people that were so uh, belligerent, living for their own life, have, are getting transformed, you know? So I'm just so excited what God is doing. And just yesterday, we also got to visit Joel, the child that, um, that God had laid on my heart to... Uh, um, get him out of the hospital and pay for his bill. I met with his father, and I also prayed uh, that God would allow me to go to different countries and preach about him. And God's gave me a lot of revelation these days, and I want to share those things with other missionaries because um, God is speaking to me that we must uh, build with the gold. And uh, Jesus says in Revelation, you ask for me, gold will find the fire. And Paul says that everyone's work will be tested either with if they're built with precious stones, gold, um, straw, or, or hay, right? And it's going to go to the fire. And what is, what is flammable will be burned up, right? But so God is teaching us to ask from Him how to build the work. He's going to test every man's work. And that's why, he's, that's why Jesus, Jesus says, ask for me gold refining the fire so that it would last. The work that you're doing will last when God judges the work that you do. So missionaries need... Holy Spirit movement in their life in order to do the things that God has them to do because that will have lasting fruit. Um, Billy Graham said this too, that without proper prayer, without proper discernment from the Spirit of God, uh, there would not have been such a tremendous move of God in our ministry. And money was not what controlled us. It was to, through the Holy Spirit and prayer. And in his time, there were many evangelistic groups trying to come up and do all these meetings, but they felt like uh, somebody said like a, a house of cards just fell apart. Why? Because money was the leader of the church, but it's the Holy Spirit who leads us um, in the ways of Christ because Christ is, our, is the head and the Holy Spirit reveals his mind, his thoughts to us that what we should do because we're the body of Christ. So we must be attached to the head by the Spirit. Um, so, so yeah, so that is really important. So yeah, so we're going to keep seeing ma- amazing things. Uh, as, I, as the Holy Spirit uh, gives me things to pray about, I see those things happening in our church. 
And two Muslims coming to a prayer meeting is a pretty big deal. It's not small. So I'm glad my father-in-law told me yesterday those two guys he prayed for were actually Muslims. And I felt like they were not really believers. I didn't know they were Muslim or not. I can't judge like that. But I really hope that God touched them and did something for them so they would know that Jesus is Lord and also be able to hear the testimonies after the service, how God had healed people. So they walked out knowing that God is powerful. They walked out seeing the love of God in the church. and so amazing what God is doing. And I'm continuing to pray for greater manifestations of the Spirit. And when the Spirit is taking control of... See, people think that every if the Spirit is, is just, it's just Spirit, 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 it's going to be crazy and wild and they won't, there's just no control. It's just got to be the, be the Bible, 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 Bible. Man, the Spirit works according to the Scripture. If you don't see those things happening in your life, you're just doing Bible study, but you don't see it actually working in your life, then something is completely wrong because the Spirit always works according to the Word of God and the will of God. And the will of God is people get saved, people get touched, people get delivered, people get healed. That's the will of God for this world. And so if you don't see it in your church and you just think, well, spirit is just too much spirit talk over here. I'm just going to do my Bible study. You're totally missing the point where if you're walking in the spirit, you're going to do the things that the scripture is telling you because the spirit will always do things according to the scripture. And the spirit will confirm things from the scripture that you're doing. So when things are going wild and crazy and people are barking like dogs, people are like falling down the stairs and there's just a disruption and stuff like that. People are not getting saved. It's just a bunch of emotionalism. Yes, that, that's not of the spirit. But people are getting healed and touched and delivered, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And Muslims are coming to your prayer meeting. People are crying in their room, asking for forgiveness. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, because only the Spirit can do that. He convicts us, the world of sin, of judgment and righteousness, right? And so he's grabbing these people and bringing them to this prayer meeting. Man, the work of the Holy Spirit is so amazing. It's like, man, Jesus <laughs> is drawing all these people, and it's just a beautiful thing. He keeps doing things. And, and I said in the beginning, two weeks, three weeks ago, I said, God, blow my mind. He's blowing my mind every single week and i'm just excited to see what god will do next so keep praying for our prayer meetings and if you have prayer requests for your uh for your deliverance please call us maybe we'll be able to connect with you guys on uh during a live stream on facebook and then you can put your request there and i'll start praying for you guys and my wife can pray for you guys and then expect god to do something in your family in your life so Anyways, God is awesome, and oh, also, the guy whose baby that we helped, uh, uh, I asked God, yes, I've got to tell you about this part, like, I got on a tangent, not, not on a tangent, but I'm going to add this on real quick, that I asked God that week, I said, Lord, allow us to go to different countries to do your work, to share about the work that you're doing, and encourage people, I don't, I don't want to go on vacation anywhere, I don't like it, I want to go with you and do the work of God. And then my friend Tony said that week where I was praying these things, he got a dream at three in the morning and God had showed him that we were in Singapore uh, in some Chinese church <laughs> preaching the word of God. My wife was there and his wife was there. So it's like, it's amazing, right? So he was going to give me some connections in uh, Singapore and Thailand. Uh, and now just to talk to missionaries and to talk to Chinese churches and most of the church, all the churches that he wants to connect me to are English congregations. So, right, so American, uh, English-speaking congregations, so that's cool. So God is, the, everything on my heart that God's giving me, He's confirming through the dreams, through the prayer, through the prayer meeting, through ev almost everything. So I'm excited to see what God will do next. And there's just no limit what God can do when you start to just set your mind on the kingdom of God. So I just want to encourage you guys with that word. And God bless you. And Walk with the Holy Spirit. Get in the Word of God. Put off those fleshy pursuits and put on Christ every day and follow Him because you will have this abundant life in Him. And so God bless you. Hope this encouraged you and stand firm in the Lord. He has such great plans for you, but it's up to you to just say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to give up my life. What you have for me is so much better. I want to experience you. I want to see you work through my life, and I guarantee you that he is going to show up in such a mighty fashion in your life because he loves you. He wants, you, he wants to show you what he's doing, and when you participate, that joy comes into your life, and you just 
springs forth from your life, all this amazing fruit, even when you have to suffer. But like you see the apostles being in the prison, they were singing hymns. They were singing hymns and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and joy. If you are in the hand of God and the will of God, that joy is going to come even in the midst of your suffering. So do what Jesus tells you to do and see him work through your life in amazing ways. So God bless you. May God's grace be upon you and just expect God to do stuff. As soon as you let go of your life, you will see him work. So God bless you.